Hey, this is Andrew in Omaha. I think it's uh, March 11th, uh, 2022. Just finished up this uh, leather apron made out of oil tan leather I got from the Springfield Leather Company. Um, it's about four ounces. And I made this for a friend of mine who makes duck calls. Uh, he really wanted something a little more heavy duty than what's available um, retail. And so I put this together for him. But uh, it's just riveted together and I use Conway buckles here to adjust uh, the straps. The straps are, there's four straps, or, or, I'm sorry, correction, there's uh, four buckles, uh, one on each end of the two straps, so that way it's completely adjustable. So, um, when he does go ahead and put this on, I didn't have an opportunity to get any measurements. So I made the uh, straps extra long with room to cut them. Uh, once we get a final measurement, then I'll just cut whatever's left off. So it uh, will fit just fine. But it's got uh, two large pockets on the top and then three smaller ones on the bottom with rivets helping reinforce the tops of the pockets. And so the back side looks like the Conway buckles and the uh, rivets came from uh, Tandy Leather here in Omaha. Uh, I stitched it together with a uh, 138 nylon brown thread and I used my Cobra Class 20 flatbed sewing machine uh, that I got from the leather machine company out of Ontario, California. So, all right, I just recently uh, got a new GoPro and a new computer which has helped out immensely with making videos. Uh, my old computer was probably almost 12 years old and it was running extremely slow. Still had an older hard drive that actually spun around versus uh, these new uh, MacBooks. Uh, works much better. But uh, that with the new GoPro um, just works so much better. I tried uh, filming this video here with my iPhone uh, just to s experiment with it and it was actually kind of a pain in the neck compared to using the GoPro and just using the SD cards. Anyway, uh, with that being said, hopefully I can get some more videos this year out. Um, but I'm just making a uh, uh, the outline, the pattern, whatever you want to call it, uh, out uh, from scratch out of poster board. I make half of it, I lay the half down on the uh, leather and trace it out and then I flip it over and trace the other side out so both sides are exactly the same size. And I'm going to cut out several of these straps here. Um, I'm not going to show every single one I cut out but I need uh, four of these uh, eight inch straps here, two for the, the top strap that goes around the neck and then two for the side that go around behind the body and I'm also going to uh, kind of line up where I want the pockets to be where I want the holes punched uh, for each of the uh, rivets and I'll flip it over and copy that on the uh, opposite side I'm going to, uh, I've already punched some holes in uh, this first stra uh, eight inch strap and then I'm just going to use it to to uh, mark the holes on the other th uh, three. The hardware I got here is this copper color. I think it looks really good contrast off this, uh, I don't know if this is Crazy Horse or what uh, Springfield's calling it now, but uh, um, I think it looks good um, against this leather and I'm using uh, the hardware from Tandy because right now these uh, copper colored one inch Conway buckles I was only able to find it through them um, I'm sure there's another company out there but like Weaver doesn't have them and uh, I wasn't uh, I don't think Springfield leather had them so, uh, but I knew that they would be in stock at the local Tandy store, so I just drove down there and picked them up. Here I am uh, measuring out my pockets and cutting them out. 
and I have a little, I don't know if I got footage of it, but I have a craft tool uh, corner punch that rounds off the the uh, corners of these. Looks like the pockets are rounded off already, so it looks like I already did that. But I'm going to throw in a stitch line here using my compass, not a fancy compass, just a cheap one I believe I got from Springfield Leather years ago. Still use it. Um, same thing with that C.S. Osborne awl that you just saw. I don't think the... the uh, Rivet setter that I have is from Tandy. It's very old. Um, it's got kind of the uh, the hole to set the washer down, and then it's got a little dome right next to that hole to round it off. Um, I don't like it. I would like to find a better one. And um, if anybody has any suggestions on the best uh, rivet setter that's uh, for setting rivets and then uh, for doming the uh, end of the rivet, um, the copper rivets, I'd really appreciate it. Just let me know in the comments section. Um, just using my two-sided tape here to get this mocked up, this first pocket, and I'll do the same thing with the uh, second pocket. But just starting out here, stitching uh, the pocket down. Now the large project like this is a little cumbersome even with a flatbed machine. Um, probably doesn't help that I'm up against the wall but that's the room that I have to work with. Uh, if this is a big shop or something I would put some like large folding tables or something around this machine. That way you could lay the project down and just move it all around and not have it bind up on you and have to roll it uh, on one end to get it to uh, uh, move around the needle. I got close a couple times to breaking the needle just because this leather is so so heavy duty and uh, a lot of pressure moving it back and forth trying to get everything lined up. Um, I've broken several needles on this machine, uh, so but it, again, it's just part of having a sewing machine. Sometimes you break needles. I did not break a needle uh, on this project though. Uh, I'm just getting this separation of this bottom pocket put in here. And I'm going to get this top pocket thrown on. Again, uh, this is the Cobra Class 20 uh, flatbed sewing machine with a servo motor uh, from the Leather Machine Company out of Ontario, California. I know Springfield Leather is a dealer for them, so uh, you can either check out their website directly or go on Springfield Leather's website. And uh, they have all the information about these machines. They're great machines. Highly recommend them. Uh, Just trying to work my way around. I'm already going to have to roll the end just a little bit and continue uh, getting this pocket stitched in. And I really wish the reverse lever on this machine was not spring loaded so it would hold uh, in reverse like on my class 3 and I could operate the hand wheel and keep one hand on the project versus having to try and hold the, uh, the reverse lever down. It's kind of a pain. We're going to get some holes punched here. I've already done the uh, rivets on the top pocket. Now I'm going to put these four rivets on the bottom pocket. I'm just putting them up at the top for a reinforcement. I think these are number nine copper rivets. And I'm using my little granite stone here to tap them down. And here's that uh, Tandy uh, uh, rivet setter that I was talking about. Um, this is the bottom of the line uh, rivet setter, and I'd like to get something a little more high quality. I've got some pair of channel lock nippers there, cutting those off. And now I'm going to put the bottom strap for the Conway buckles on, same way with the uh, same rivets. And then I just use a ball peen hammer to tap them down. And it looks okay, in my opinion, uh, using the hammer to make a, the rivet flat with the hammer. But I would like to put the little dome on it, kind of like a pair of Levi's jeans has. That would be really cool. And I made a mistake there. I got ahead of myself and started tapping the washer down before I put my strap on. So I had to gingerly go in there and... Uh, 
and cut it off with the nippers without uh, cutting my leather. So I make mistakes like everybody else, and there was one of them right there. Now I'm uh, marking my holes for the top straps here. So I'm going to throw four holes, and I have the largest holes that I, I can make with this little Tandy uh, multi-size uh, hole punch. I've had this hole punch for years. It's a, it's cheap. Has uh, I think five or six different sizes on it, and it's always worked. Now I'm gonna show you how the Conway buckle works here. I'm fishing the uh, bottom strap uh, onto the bottom, or correction, onto the stud here of the Conway buckle, and then you go and take the uh, top strap and you feed it over the top of it and it'll lock it in place. I think they're really cool and they look really good on this type of a project. And it just makes everything really adjustable for uh, whoever you're making it for. I'm going to throw an English point here on the strap. I'm going to go ahead and uh, fish it through here. You can see how it fits. And here I am finishing up, putting the bottom strap on, and this project is finished. It's pretty simple to make. It's a lot of leather here, um, so leather is pretty expensive, so I mean, uh, but this is uh, the end product. I have it there against the Cobra Class 20. This is Andrew in Omaha, Nebraska. Hope you enjoyed the video. Have a nice day.